Today I'm talking about the end of academic medicine. Academic medicine has changed a lot since I started studying uh, in medical school. And I actually work at an academic institution. I have papers that I publish on a regular basis. And in fact, the inspiration for this particular video came from some of our recent videos where I talked about some of the research that I've been doing and some of the publications that have come out of the groups I've been working with here in London. And what I realized is that there's so much going on when it comes to publishing papers and doing research in 2020 compared to how it used to be done. And I want to talk a little bit about open access and predatory publishing, which is a huge issue facing academic world right now. It's not just the only issue. Uh, interestingly, the other aspect where pay to view journals remains a serious issue. And there's competing tensions here. We have journal companies that need to exist. They have staff, they have costs, they have expenses. So they need to generate income in order to provide the service to produce publications, but we also have the need for access to that information. At the end of the day, only by doctors sharing information does medicine become advanced, how it moves forward. And of course, we're in the middle of the coronavirus and worldwide pandemic, and even more important than ever has sharing of information been critical. So I wanted to talk a little bit about open access publishing, predatory journals, and some of the recent controversies. So first of all, what is open access publishing? Well, you have to understand the traditional publishing model first. So in the past, the only way for doctors to communicate novel ideas was in journals. And doctors would subscribe to these journals and they would get them physically mailed to their offices on a monthly basis and they would read that and that would be the way that they became aware of new ideas. In addition, doctors would travel to conferences and meet and there'd be opportunities to discuss and share information. And that's how medicine was communicated for hundreds of years, really. But the internet, like everything, changed medicine permanently. So now, journals don't come in the mail, or rarely do. Most physicians are getting their information off of online sources. Not only that, the idea of subscribing to one or two journals has also become less relevant. Now the, the approach that most doctors take is that they go on a search engine, Google Scholar or even Google itself, and they'll type in the question that they're looking for answers from and they'll look at what comes up and they'll evaluate the information on an individual basis. And in fact, one of the most important things that we do as academic physicians is to train future generations of doctors on how to look at the literature so they can make their own decisions. It's one of the critical skills that's taught both in medical school and residency, and we emphasize in our program on a regular basis. So rather than getting a journal mailed, we're going on the internet. And so the revenue source for many of these journals has declined in that the individual subscriber is a rare person. Instead, journal companies will turn to academic institutions for institutional licenses. And as a result, we've seen massive increases in what the institutional licenses are costing for journals. On the other hand, there is a new way of looking at journals, and that's open access. Instead of the reader paying on a per article basis or via a monthly subscription or part of an institutional license, the person who pays is the researcher. Now imagine this, you're a journal company that has a product, you're able to distribute this journal, and in some ways even sell either advertisements alongside the journals or sell subscription to the journals. But you add that to the fact that the researchers are now submitting you their articles and they're gonna pay you to publish. And in Canada, in the Canadian dollar, typically to publish a journal article, it's gonna cost around $3,000. So as a researcher, you're not necessarily getting paid to do the research at all. And to publish it, you're actually paying 
to, to publish. And this is where the challenges and the crisis in academic medicine actually come into play, is you have many times volunteer researchers looking for grant money possibly, but maybe self-funded in some ways, trying to generate research and then having to pay to publish. Now the issue of open access gets even more challenging from the creator point of view. It gets more challenging because you add the fact that there are this concept called predatory journals. So again, when the barrier to entry to publish a journal was high, you had to print journals, find a readership, mail those journals out to get exposure. It was hard for a journal company to make that effort to, to jump into the business of journal publication. Well now, with the internet, that's not required at all. In fact, if anything, it's easier than ever. And in fact, we've seen journals pop up all over the world. In fact, India, for example, is one nation that produces multiple journals. But the question is, what's the quality? If the barrier to entry is low, then the quality that might be going along with those new journals is also low. And as a researcher, I get emails multiple times a day requesting, please submit your latest research in our archives of surgery or our blank of surgery journal. And those emails oftentimes look professional. You can go to the website, you get a sense that this is a legitimate journal. But in reality, this is a journal that has very weak peer review processes. They are very motivated to publish so that the researchers are gonna pay that, that publication fee. And at the end of the day, the quality of the research that's published in those journals is low. So we have a serious challenge here. One, that there's a desire to have access to the information. We don't want to hide the information behind a paywall so nobody can get to it. Because at the end of the day, the highest quality of research should be out there for everyone to see. And yet, the fact that the cost of publication is now being put on the shoulders of the researcher has led to the emergence of these lower quality predatory journals. So you have access to the information that may be the lower quality information and the higher quality information oftentimes still remains behind a paywall in a subscription only basis. And there's this tension between availability and quality that's occurring right now in 2020. And in fact, if anything, the impact factor of the journal matters more than it ever has because it's harder and harder for readers and the user of the information to assess on its own whether this particular article went through the proper peer review process. At the time of this recording, the growth of open access journals continues to climb and is climbing at an almost exponential rate. But we know that people trained to peer review and evaluate these journal articles are not growing at an exponential rate. There really hasn't been much change in the number of doctors providing services as academic uh, professors. And yet, the amount of journals and the amount of articles being published in open, open access journals has exploded and continues to explode. The only thing that's possible here is that the quality is declining. And as a researcher, I understand. I have been in the position where I put my heart and soul into research that I've had trouble getting published. And I understand how difficult that can be. And the temptation to publish that article in a lower quality journal is always there. So at the end of the day, the crisis that's facing academia in, in general right now is a real one. And we're going through this and there's a challenge and transition happening. For you, the watcher and reader of this video, I recommend that you take a close look at the quality of the article. Does the research appear sound? Does it appear that there's been a peer review process? Does the journal make the primary data available? These are some of the things that you can, that you can use to help guide you when you're actually looking at publications. And once again, thank you for listening. My name is uh, Dr. Richard Hilsden, and this is Knife Skills.